welcome. Welcome to the Online Congregational United Church of Christ. We are so happy that you could join us and be with us in this way this morning. We welcome you and hope that you know that in this place, no matter who you are, or where you've been, or where you're going, or what you've done, in this place you are welcome and you are beloved. Please join Bob in the call to worship. Call to worship. God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns. The nations are in an uproar. The kingdoms totter. He utters his voice. The earth melts. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Kathleen and I are going to lead our first song, Come, O Fount of Every Blessing. first reading today comes from Exodus, Exodus 20, uh, chapters 1 through 17, uh, verses 1 through 17. These are the Ten Commandments. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Israel, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth, you shall not bow down to them or serve them. For I am the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commands. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, 
for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, stock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, male or female slave, ox, donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Our second reading this morning is from Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 through 27. It goes on for a ways. 
If you will only obey the Lord your God by diligently observing all his commandments that I am commanding you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. All these blessings shall come, come upon you and overtake you if you obey the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your womb, the fruit of your ground, and the fruit of your livestock, both the increase of your cattle and the issue of your flock. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before you. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you in seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon you in your barns and in all that you undertake. He will bless you in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. The Lord will establish you as his holy people, as he has sworn to you, if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. All the peoples, peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of you. The Lord will make you abound in prosperity, in the fruit of your womb, in the fruit of your livestock, and in the fruit of your ground in the land that the Lord swore to your ancestors to give you. The Lord will open for you his rich storehouse, the heavens, to give the rain of your land in its season and to bless all your undertakings. You will lend to many nations, but you will not borrow. The Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be only at the top and not at the bottom if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I am commanding you today by diligently observing them. And if you do not turn aside from any of the words that I am commanding you today, either to the right or to the left, following other gods to serve them. But if you will not obey the Lord your God by diligently observing all his commandments and decrees that I am commanding you today, then all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. Cursed shall be you in the city, and cursed shall you be in the field. Cursed shall you be your basket and your kneading bowl. Cursed shall be the fruit of your womb, the fruit of your ground, the increase of your cattle, and the issue of your flock. Cursed shall you be when you come in, and cursed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will send upon you disaster, panic, and frustration in everything you attempt to do until you are destroyed and perish quickly on account of the evil of your deeds with which you have forsaken me. The Lord will make the pestilence cling to you until it has consumed you off the land that you are entering to possess. The Lord will afflict you with consumption, fever, inflammation, with fiery heat and drought, and with blight and mildew, they shall pursue you until you perish. The sky over your head shall be bronze and the earth under you iron. The Lord will change the rain of your land into powder, and only dust shall come down upon you from the sky until you are destroyed. The Lord will cause you to be defeated before your enemies, you shall go out against them one way and flee before them in seven ways. You shall become an object of horror to all the kingdoms of the earth. Your corpses shall be food for every bird of the air and animal of the earth, and there shall be no one to frighten them away. The Lord will afflict you with the boils of Egypt, the tumors, scurvy, and itch, of which you cannot be healed. Well, that's some pretty awful stuff. <laughs> Will you pray with me? Come, Holy Spirit. Open our hearts and our ears, our minds. Let us hear that which you have prepared for us to hear this morning. May the words that need to be spoken be spoken 
And may the words that need to be heard be heard. We pray in all your holy names. Amen. When Moses came down off that mountain, staggered down off that mountain, bearing these stone tablets, the people knew exactly what they were. These people had been through the wilderness for years, and every time they crossed a boundary with another country, they would see embedded in the ground stone tablets that bore the words of a treaty between the king of one country and the king of the other country that were adjoining. Now, these were called suzerainty or suzerainty treaties, and they were between a greater king and a lesser king. So the king of the stronger, larger country was the greater king, and the king of the lesser, smaller country was the lesser king. And the people saw those tablets and they knew what they were. They knew they were a treaty and they knew that God was the greater king and Moses and the people were the lesser king. There is um, a Hebrew phrase for covenant, which literally translates as to cut a treaty. Karat berit means to cut a treaty. And that's the word for covenant. So you've got this treaty, this covenant that Bob read about. There are all the commands that the great king makes and then the responsibilities of the lesser king or the people. The characteristics of these treaties were that you would identify the greater king this is, I am the Lord, your God. And then you would identify the lesser king or the people. You will be my people. And then you set out the conditions. The conditions contain blessings and curses. Now, typically in the ancient Near East in those days, the lesser uh, king or the vassal nation would promise to give uh, a tenth of its wheat and its grain and its grapes and its camels and its male population to serve as soldiers to the greater king. And the greater king, in turn, would protect the lesser kingdom from uh, assaults by other kingdoms, would promise not to subjugate them and make them slaves. Their job was to serve the greater king. So they had this deal. And if they didn't, there were curses that extended to the nth generation. Your camels, your camels, camels, your sons, camels, your grandsons, camels, all those camels are going to be blighted, poxed, sick, drooping down, not good for anything. That, and that's just the camels. These, these curses would go on and on and on the curses that Bob began to read in the second version of the Ten Commandments are followed by another 40 verses of curses. I mean, you, you get the fear of God put into you when you hear these curses. And in fact, it takes 12 minutes to read all the curses, which is why we're not reading all of the, I, I didn't time it, but I have read that it takes 12 minutes to read it. Now there's a difference between a contract and a covenant. What's the difference? Anybody tell me, what's the difference between a contract and a covenant? One is legal, one is moral. Wow, one is legal, one is moral. You didn't even get prepped for that. <laughs> in the covenants in the Old Testament, God initiates the people have a choice. The people can choose whether or not they want to accept the covenant. They hear all the blessings and curses and the obligations are binding throughout generations. Now we're gonna have a little Old Testament 101 here. 
I'm going to walk you through the covenants in the Old Testament. Testament, by the way, means covenant. So the Old Testament means the Old Covenant. And there are several of them. The first covenant was made with Noah. After the flood, God said, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood. Never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. And this is the sign of the covenant that I make between you and me and every living creature for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Then that's so long ago that we don't even know how long ago it is. It's thousands of years ago. And there was no writing at the time that that happened. So this is a story that was told around the campfires for generations and generations and generations. Then many thousands of years later or some thousands of years later, God made a covenant with Abraham and he said, I am God almighty, walk before me and be blameless and I will make my covenant between me and you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations and kings shall come from you. I am making an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring. And I will give to you and your offspring after you the land where you are now an alien, all the land of Canaan, Canaan for a perpetual holding and I will be their God. As for you, you shall keep my covenant, you and your offspring after you throughout all the generations. Then we have the covenant with Moses, which Bob read. And Bob read the provisions and he uh, read the curses, the blessings and the curses. What he didn't read is how this covenant, which was the major foundational covenant, was ratified. Moses came and told the people the words of the Lord and all the ordinances and all the people answered with one voice and said, all the words that the Lord has spoken, we will do. Then Moses sent young men of the people of Israel to find burnt offerings and sacrifices and offerings that were given to the well-being of the Lord. Now, here's how it was ratified. Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins. And half of it, he dashed against the altar. And you know what he did with the other half? The NRSV, which is uh, by many scholars considered to be the most accurate translation, and it's the one that we have read from this morning, says, he dashed the blood on the people. Other earlier translations thought that was a bit too strong and say he sprinkled it on the people. He didn't sprinkle it. He threw it on them. And guess what? We don't have to do that. <laughs> we do not have to get the blood thrown on us. The basic deal is I will be your God and you will be my people. A thousand years later comes the big covenant with David. David was um, made king and the promise was that he, God says, I will be with you wherever you go. I will cut off your enemies before you and I will make for you a great name. I will make of you a house, meaning a, a dynasty. When your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring after you who shall come forth from your body and I will establish his kingdom, that's David's son. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. One of the things about these covenants that intrigues me is they basically were made with very ordinary people. David didn't start out being a king. David started out being a shepherd. Moses started out being a shepherd. And, you know, Moses was very flawed. Moses had what we would in today's politically correct system of speaking call anger management issues. Moses killed an Egyptian overseer. That's why they had to leave. I mean, you know, let's get real. They, Moses was on the lamb. 
Then when Moses went up on the mountain the first time and got the Ten Commandments, he was taking so long up there, 40 days and 40 nights, that the people went to Aaron, Moses' second in command. You remember the story and said, you know, I, we don't know where Moses is. We don't know what he's doing. Make of us, make for us an idol that we can worship. They made a golden calf. Moses came down. He saw that and he took the covenant, the treaty, the stone tablets that God had given him and he broke them. That's why they had to do it again. That's why there are two stories of the covenant being given in the Old Testament. So there's Moses. David um, David impregnated his best friend's wife. She seduced him, but that's, that's no reason to, you know, follow through. And then the part that I can't get over, he sent his best friend, who was a soldier, to the front lines of a battle where he would be killed because you could not, uh, when you were in battle, you could not go home and sleep with your wife, which means if your wife got pregnant and you were in battle or even at home and you know you count up the months, nine months, and if it doesn't work out, it means somebody else did the deed. So he had his best friend killed so they wouldn't know this. I mean, these people are, you know, they're ordinary people or they're people that sin greatly, as Martin Luther said once. So if God can make covenants with these people, God can make covenants with us. And my question for you today is this basic covenant, I will be your God and you will be my people. What does that look like for you? If you're, suppose you're just sitting in your house somewhere or you're sitting in Lithia Park on the bench and God sits down next to you and says, okay, I'm going to make a covenant with you. What is God going to say to you? What is going to be the covenant that God makes with you? Last week was part one of a three-part series on covenants. We talked mostly about the ladder to the light, the spiritual journey from darkness into light that is described in the book, Ladder to the Light. And at the end of that uh, reflection, I talked about the covenant that we have with each other. Charleston, the, the author, talks about the fact that we have to elevate our relationships with each other to that of kinship, which requires making a sacred covenant with each other. And the covenant is to care enough to seek the truth and to be united as one people. Last week, we talked about a covenant with each other. This week, we're talking about a covenant with God. And next week, We'll talk about a covenant with Jesus. Amen. We now come to the time where we have an opportunity to pray with, for, and about each other and our loved ones. Please pray with me. Dear God, you are in heaven, you are on earth. You live and breathe and move and have your being within each one of us. Be with us in this time. Let us feel your presence at this time as we send forth our prayers for our loved ones, for our neighbors, for our friends, for our families, and for our world. And we know that our Heavenly Father, Mother, God, moves through each one of us, moves through the people for, for whom we pray and those situations that we find ourselves in fear of. 
Thank you for the strength and the courage and the wherewithal to move through, to persevere, to have faith, and to love and care for all those who are around us now. And though we can't speak every prayer out loud, we know that they are being tended to lovingly by our God. And now let us speak together the prayer of Jesus from the New Zealand prayer book. Eternal spirit, earth maker, pain bearer, life giver, source of all that is and that shall be, father and mother of us all, loving God in whom is heaven, the hallowing of your name echo through the universe, the way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and test, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. You'll see on your screen, there are two ways that you can support the work and mission and ministry of this church as we minister to each other and to our community and the world at large, you can um, go online, ashlandpeacechurch.org, click give now and follow the directions, or you can text, and there's a phone number there, um, text to give with the amount you'd like to give. This is uh, talking about giving money but we also give our time and our hearts and our spirit. Um, the, we give the things that matter to us, that call us forth to help make those things that are good happen in this family of faith and in this community. And we bless you for your gifts and thank you for all of the many ways in which you do give to this family of faith. Please join us in the last hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
be at peace on this blessed day, whether it brings sunlight or storms, serenity or struggle. Be at peace in passing through it, doing what needs to be done, living as fully as you can, as authentically as you can, at peace in your soul. Know that all things come and go on the way to where you are called to be. They pass around you, they pass over and under you, but they do not define you or contain you. For your life is not an inventory of pains or pleasures, but a sonnet of the spirit, a mystery fashioned from and for eternity, a strength so powerful that it can afford to be vulnerable to love be at peace on this blessed day. Amen.